Using Metcal calibration management software with a 96270A RF reference source can dramatically shorten the time it takes to calibrate a spectrum analyzer. This time compressed video was edited from a full Agilent E4440A calibration using a Fluke Metcal procedure and the Fluke 96270A 27 gigahertz low phase noise reference source. The full calibration procedure takes about one hour and 10 minutes with minimal connection changes and minimal operator interaction. This is about 12 hours faster than the same calibration done manually and about twice as fast as the manufacturer's own calibration system. We are including a timer so you can see how long it takes to run this procedure. The equipment used in this calibration includes a fully optioned Fluke 96270A RF reference source, an Anritsu MG3496C signal generator, an Agilent 11667A and an additional 11667B power splitter, attenuators and various connectors on four low-pass filters. Details on these required accessories are included with the procedure. So sit back, grab your popcorn, and get ready to see the fastest way to improve your lab's efficiency in spectrum analyzer calibration. Uh, today we're gonna to be using Metcal Runtime to calibrate an Agilent E4440A PSA series spectrum analyzer. Uh, using Metcal to control primarily the 96270A RF reference source. Uh, and some other pieces of equipment as well to perform performance verification uh, on this unit under test. Uh, so I've already selected our unit under test asset in Metcal and the procedure that we're going to be running today as well. So Metcal is already configured and ready to run. I'm going to go and switch to the run tab click the run button and we're going to start running our procedure. So today we're going to be running all of the tests. So I'm going to uh, press this select all button here, which checks all of these boxes for us. And we're going to press OK and proceed to the next step. So we have all of that. It's all present. It's all configured. It's also all connected to the GPIB interface already. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Metcal is going to go out and make sure everything is there and that we have the right equipment hooked up to perform the tests. And now we're actually into the Metcal procedure body itself. And Metcal now is in control, remote control of the unit under test. And it is performing a, an internal alignment, uh, which you can see here in the top status bar area of Metcal runtime. Uh, it shows that we're performing an internal alignment and that the system alignments align all now operation is in progress. Uh, so that just takes a minute or so to complete. Uh, it's just basically a self calibration. <clears throat> And once that's finished, we'll begin testing. All right, so internal alignment's complete and it passed. You can see the indication down here in our results grid behind that prompt. Uh, internal alignment uh, with a passing indicator, the screen check, mark, check box off to the side. Uh, so that one is finished and we're now moving on to the frequency reference accuracy test, uh, testing the internal oscillator on our PSA spectrum analyzer, which is our unit under test. The 96270 is now making frequency measurements using its frequency counter function. And you can see that test is already finished and we have a passing result. I have to talk very quickly because some of these tests go by very fast. Uh, those are already completed and now we are moving on to power bandwidth accuracy. When it's finished with this test, it will also move on to the next test and it will continue doing that until there's an operator intervention is required. Uh, perhaps another connection change will be needed at which point Metcal will pause and give us instructions on how to make the next connection and um, wait for us to press advance once that connection is in place. Okay, that test is finished uh, and Metcal is now moving on to the resolution bandwidth switching uncertainty test, which you can see is going fairly quickly. Uh, Metcal is asking us to connect a type N 50 ohm termination to the input of the UT. Uh, so I'm going to reach across here and make that connection. Uh, both of these tests are somewhat slow and take quite a while to run. Uh, so there's probably going to be about 25 minute uh, or 30 minute, uh, 30 minutes worth of testing with this connection in place. So I'm going to reach across here, remove the termination, connect the leveling head directly to the RF input. And we are now ready to proceed with this test. So I'm going to click on advance and this will 
cause Metcal to begin taking measurements for the frequency readout accuracy test. Once this test is finished, it will then move on to all of the other tests in sequence that use the same connection. Uh, it'll get through as many of those as it can uh, before pausing and prompting for the next connection change. The frequency readout accuracy has already finished and we're now moving on to frequency span accuracy. That test is also finished. Metcal is now moving on to the count accuracy test. Uh, one thing I forgot to point out here in the header is that as Metcal controls the 96270 from test to test, uh, which is now finished with that one and moved on the noise sidebands, uh, but you'll see as it controls the 96270 to source various signals, uh, you'll see information here uh, presented about the stimulus that Metcal has asked the 96270 to deliver. Okay, looks like the noise. Sidebands test is finished. Now moving on to absolute amplitude accuracy. Which this is the test that I mentioned earlier that we expected to find some limit failures on. Uh, as you can see, our status indicator in the left column there has switched from a green check mark over to a red X. Uh, in this particular runtime, it is Metcal is not pausing on a failed test because I instructed it not to at the beginning of this procedure. Uh, the procedure actually asks if you want it to pause on failed tests or not. Uh, so we're now getting prompted by Metcal to insert a 10 dB attenuator between the leveling head and the UTRF input. So I'm going to reach across and do that now. Uh, that connection is now in place. I'm going to go ahead and press advance. Okay, we are now to the next connection message, which is part of the display scale fidelity test. Metcal is asking me to remove the 10 dB attenuator and insert the 20 dB attenuator in its place. Again, we are just trying to keep the output level of the 96270 in uh, its prime operating range, also known as the sweet spot. And by inserting this attenuator and re-establishing our previously recorded reference, we are able to continue with this test while keeping the output level of the 96270 high enough that we stay in that in that prime operating range. Okay, the next connection instruction is in place. It's just asking us to remove that 20 dB attenuator that we inserted earlier and reconnect the leveling head directly to the RF input. Torque that right back down using the torque wrench that's included in the 96270 kit. And we are now ready to proceed with the second harmonic distortion test. So I just clicked advance and that cow will continue making measurements. Okay, we're still in the second harmonic distortion test, but Metcal is asking us to insert two 1.8 gigahertz low pass filters between the leveling head and the UTRF input. So I am inserting those low pass filters now. And those are in place and I am going to click advance and let Metcal proceed with this measurement. That one's over very quickly. And then now Metcal is asking us to remove the low pass filters from the test setup. And I'm going to click advance so that you can see the next connection instruction while I'm removing this. And I'm going to talk to that connection instruction just for a minute here. That is asking us to insert the 9600 FLT 1 gigahertz wide offset phase noise filter. Um, which as you can see on screen there, it's suggested to mount to the side of your of your 96270 and that serves as a filter for the one gigahertz source signal that the 96270 is going to provide but in this case um, I'm actually going to leave that filter out because I know that my 96270 that I'm using has uh, sufficient performance uh, to go with my UT which has sufficient performance as well to actually allow this test to pass without the need for inserting that filter 
Um, so I'm going to leave the filter out, uh, but just know for some workload or for some particular UTs, that filter may be required. That filter is available if you should need it. Uh, but in this case, just based on experience with this particular hardware, I know that it'll pass without it. Uh, so I'm leaving it out and I'm going to click advance. And I've already put this connection in place, which is the leveling head uh, directly to the UTRF input. And I'm going to click advance here as well. And we should see passing results coming up next even without that 9600 FLT wide offset phase noise, affectionately known as the WAPN filter, W-O-P-N, uh, you'll see that it'll still, it should still pass these tests even without that filter in place. Pretty good testament to the cleanliness of the 96270 signal. All right, so Metcal's now prompting us to remove the leveling head connection to the 9600 FLT, which we don't have in place, so I'm going to press advance. And now we're having a connection instruction for the frequency response test, which asks us to connect the leveling head directly to the UTRF input. Uh, that is already in place from before. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click advance. And that cow will proceed with the frequency response test. Up until the point where it needs the next connection change, which will be the first connection change where we replace the leveling head, and begin to use the microwave output with a power splitter and sensors. Uh, we have already characterized that power splitter using the 96270 and stored that characterization data in uh, the profile memory within the 96270. And what you're going to see happen here in just a few moments is Metcal will go out and ask the 96270 if uh, profile data already exists or not and it's going to present us with some details about that profile so that we uh, have the information that we need in order to determine if we want to reuse that existing profile or not. Uh, in this case, I've already measured the profile. I've already had the power splitter data uh, characterized uh, as needed. So we're going to use that profile that's already stored in the 96270. Uh, one thing I, we do recommend that you do in order to keep that uh, your connection straight and Make sure that your connections, like in this case, now that we're doing the perform performance verification, match our characterization data that we stored previously. We actually recommend that you label your out a power splitter output ports, either A and B or one and two or uh, you know Bob and Larry or whatever you wanna label them, just some kind of convention that makes sense uh, to you so that you know which of those ports uh, was characterized as your reference plane during the profile measurement. Uh, you always need to know which reference plane you're using and which sensor, which reference sensor was connected to that port uh, so that you can connect your leveling sensor to the other port and, and keep, your, keep your data aligned correctly with the connections that you're making and not reverse your, uh, your port tracking data that you've stored in your characterization or in your profile, sorry. So that's just a good, uh, good tip. Label your power sensor or your power splitter output port so that you can always keep those straight. It is important to know which sensor was used on which output port during the characterization and then also make sure that the right sensor is connected to the correct port uh, during use as well. You do not want to reverse those. And we're now going to get another a new connection diagram which has us remove the leveling head from the test setup. And that's actually the last time the leveling head will be used for this procedure so I'm going to set it aside over here. Uh, and I'm going to bring our characterized power splitter in, uh, which is already pre-configured with all of the adapters that we're going to need. And I'm going to connect that to the UTRF input. So our connection's in place. And I'm going to press advance. And Metcal will continue with the frequency response tests. Okay, Metcal is now finished with that power splitter. It's telling us to go ahead and disconnect it. And it's going to have us connect our 11667B power splitter in its place for this next connection instruction. Our connection is now in place and we're ready to proceed by clicking advance. And Metcal will now continue with the frequency response tests above 3 gigahertz. And then I believe it moves on to spurious responses after this. Uh, so this connection will be in place for some time. 
right, looks like frequency response is finished, and Metcal's now moving on to the spurious responses test. Still using the same setup, so no connection change required. The good thing about these long periods of walkaway time is instead of sitting and watching it, perhaps you could go enjoy a nice hot cup of coffee or maybe even calibrate another piece of equipment. Have multiple Metcal workstations running at the same time. All right, spurious responses test is finished. And we're now moving on to second harmonic distortion. You can see here in just a minute, I should get a prompt to insert a pair of 4.4 gigahertz low pass filters. And here comes that prompt. I hear it beeping. All right, Metcal's calling for me to insert two 4.4 gigahertz low pass filters between the microwave output and the power splitter input port. And that connection's in place. I'll go ahead and click advance. And that one's over fairly quickly. But now we have quite a bit more involved set up in place. Uh, this is for the last test of our procedure, the third order intercept uh, test. And we are going to be using the 96270 along with a second microwave generator and combining those two signals into the RF input of the UT. So that is the recommended test setup for this test and that's now in place. Uh, we also added another 10 megahertz connection on the rear panel of these instruments to extend that 10 megahertz phase lock connection over to our Anritsu MG3694C generator as well so that all three devices are phase locked uh, together. And that is all in place and I'm gonna press advance and Metcal is going to continue along with this test taking more measurements and this will be the final test of our procedure. All right and that is the end of the procedure. I'm going to click OK here. Uh, this is the standard Metcal prompt uh, to remove all connections and what you'll see next is that the Met team work order will come up. Uh, that will give the technician the chance to fill in any additional information that's required, uh, perhaps ambient temperature and humidity conditions, uh, they can generate their certificate, they can generate their labels, uh, they can make any adjustments that they need to, um, to status throughout your lab's workflow. And once they're finished, uh, they can close this work order and this procedure is complete. The data has been stored in MetTeam and your certificate's ready to generate. You've just seen how using Metcal software with the 96270A 27GHz low phase noise reference source can dramatically reduce the time required to calibrate a spectrum analyzer. The fastest way to improve your lab's efficiency in spectrum analyzer calibrations. For more information about Metcal software or the 96270A, visit www.flukecal.com.